today I finished Evil in Modern Thought, An Alternative History to Philosophy by Susan Neiman. In this book, Neiman goes over the problem of evil while starting at the history of the Lisbon earthquake, which started in 1750, to which shook the core philosophers and theologians alike. He, she discusses several philosophers such as Leibniz and Kant in the beginning and moves over to Hume, Camus, Sartre in brief overviews and discusses Nietzsche mostly with his eternal recurrence or eternal return of the same. I would like to read you a quote that came to mind while reading this book. Is the problem of evil with from Epicurus? Is God willing to prevent evil but not able? Then he is not omnipotent. Is he able but not willing? Then he is malevolent. Is he both able and willing? Then once cometh evil. Is he neither able nor willing? Then why call him God? On on page one twenty. Neiman writes, a father who lets his children break their legs so it can show his skills at healing. This is the God in whom we put our trust. There's a doctrine of being whose justice, wisdom, and mercy are shown in his demeaning, redeeming only some of his preachers he allowed to fall into moral sin really suggests something better. An analysis of this quote could be that e evil or suffering or pain is necessary in order to attain the highest good or a sense of pleasure or or bliss as in bliss is ignorance furthermore furthermore on page 216 the the writer writes for morality, the existence of suffering is a condemnation of life itself. Nietzsche suggested we try the other alternative. Humankind became sick by letting suffering serve as an argument against life. Why not let, why not let life serve as refutation of suffering? This is uh, more so in the line of suffering makes you stronger. And Nietzsche said, whatever does not kill you makes you stronger in on the genealogy of morals. I have one problem with one of the quotes that Neiman used, one which was on can be found on page 306. If there is no God, nothing about me needs to be serious, argues the theologian. The horrible deed that I do, the suffering that I permit to exist, live on after the moment in which they occur only in conscience human memory and expire with it. Can one admit this and live a serious but godless life? This is the question of philosophy. This is bad in several ways. One does not need religion in order to be moral. Moreover, one needs only reason to be moral in the enlightenment sense. There are countless atrocities committed by religion such as most famously the Crusades or the the reveal of Catholic pedophilia in the church from the priests, and there was once a mass grave of, bo of bodies of children found in the church a while back. All one has to do is say they are committing an act for God, and that all back becomes just. However, if that act is not just, then it, we shouldn't call God just as well. Say if God wanted you to kill someone. Would you do it just because you think God is just, pure, and merciful? Did one need to look at rhetorical or anecdotes? One can look at the Bible where God said to Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac as an offering. Anyways, I enjoyed the book. It was an easy read. And if you are looking for a philosophical book to read over the summer, or while the summer ends, then this is a good book for you. Thank you, and have a good night.